Hey rockers and metalheads, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the electrifying world of heavy metal to celebrate the iconic guitarist who fueled the fiery sounds of Judas Priest, the one and only Glenn Tipton. Glenn Tipton, the mastermind behind the strings, revolutionized the landscape of heavy metal. His soaring riffs and mesmerizing solos became the heartbeat of Judas Priest music, setting stages ablaze worldwide. His innovative style and technical prowess inspired a generation of guitarists, leaving an indelible mark on the metal scene. Tifton's guitar wizardry wasn't just about notes, it was about channeling raw energy into every chord, every lick. Glenn Raymond Tipton was born on October 25th, 1947, in Blackheath, Stratfordshire. Tipton didn't start playing the guitar until he was age 19, with his first guitar being a Hofner acoustic guitar. He would then play on a Rickenbacker until he was able to afford a Fender Stratocaster. His early influences were Jimi Hendrix, Beat Purple, and Led Zeppelin. All these bands formed an impression on me going back to those early days. His main influence as a guitar player, though, was Rory Gallagher. Glenn's first band was Shave Em Dry, and in May of 1974, Tipton, whose then current band, the Flying Hat Band, had the same manager as Judas Priest. He joined Judas Priest during the recording of Rock A Rolla. Tipton's fretwork wasn't just about speed, it was about crafting unforgettable melodies and face melting solos that echoed through metal history. His ability to infuse emotion into his playing, elevated Judas Priest's music to legendary status. Zipton also frequently played keyboards on the early Priest albums. Sad Wings of Destiny was released in March of 1976 with The Ripper and Victim of Changes. Their major label debut, Sin After Sin, in January 1977, with session drummer Simon Phillips' use of double kick drum on tracks such as Dissonant Aggressor, Up the Metal Quotient. They released Stained Class in 1978, along with Killing Machine, which was released in America as Hellbent for Leather in 1979. The live release from the supporting tour, Unleashed in the East in 1979, was the first of many Judas Priest albums to go platinum. In 1980s, British Steel was Judas Priest's commercial breakthrough. Living After Midnight and Breaking the Law were standout songs. Judas Priest quickly shot to rock superstar status during the 1980s with their albums. 1981's Point of Entry featuring Heading Out to the Highway. 1982, Screaming for Vengeance with the monster You've Got Another Thing Coming, Electric Eye, and Screaming for Vengeance. In 1983, the band played the Us Festival in California. The lineup also included Quiet Riot, Motley Crue, Ozzy Osbourne, Triumph, Scorpions, and Van Halen. 1984's Defenders of the Faith featured Free Will Burning and my favorite, The Sentinel. They were included in the Live Aid show at RFK Stadium in 1985. The album Turbo in 1986 introduced guitar synths to the band's sound and included the songs Turbo Lover and Locked In, which had a killer solo. The band continued recording and touring with the disappointing, to me anyway, album Ram It Down in 1988. The band entered the 1990s with the album Painkiller with new drummer Scott Travis. Tracks such as Touch of Evil and the killer title track, Painkiller, were tipped in Up the Ante, incorporating sweep picking, tremolo dive bombs, arpeggios, and lightning fast runs. Alfred left Priest in 1982 and the band went on hiatus. And during their split, Tipton wrote material for a solo project. His first solo album, Baptism of Fire, was released in 1997, followed by Edge of the World in 2006, which came from the sessions for Baptism of Fire. In 1996, Judas Priest reformed with vocalist Tim Ripper Owens. The album's Jugulator in 1997 
and Demolition in 2001. Both of these albums experimented with new sounds. In 2003, Judas Priest reunited with Halford and toured in the celebration of his return in 2004. The band released Angel of Retribution in 2005 and Nostradamus in 2008. In 2010, Judas Priest announced their Epitaph World Tour, which was to be their last world tour. They released their 17th album, Redeemer of Souls, in July of 2014, as well as supporting the album with a world tour. On February 12th, 2018, Tipton announced that he would step down from touring when he revealed that he had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, which he was first diagnosed with in 2008. He stated that he was still a member of the band despite his diagnosis and would not rule out future onstage appearances. Despite Tipton's tough challenge with Parkinson's disease, his determination and love for music remained unwavering. Tipton lives in the village of Romsley, Worcestershire, in the West Midlands near Birmingham, England, and has a state-of-the-art recording studio next to his home. The 18th album, Firepower, was released on March 9, 2018. At the March 20, 2018 show, Tipton joined the band on stage to perform Metal Gods, Breaking the Law, and Living After Midnight. He continued to appear for encores throughout the remainder of the Firepower World Tour. Tipton joined Judas Priest on the Power Trip show on October 7, 2023. Alfred welcomed Tipton to the stage for the final three songs of the set, Metal Gods, Breaking the Law, and Living After Midnight. His brief returns to the stage during Judas Priest's performances were not just moments of music, but symbols of resilience and strength. Tipton used SGs and a Stratocaster with two DiMarzio Super Distortion humbuckers as his main instruments until the mid-1980s when he started using Hamer guitars. Around 1984, he switched to the Hamer Phantom GT model, which was fitted with EMG humbuckers, a Kaler tremolo, and one volume pot. As of late 2015, he is now officially endorsing ESP guitars. Tipton used 50 and 100 watt Marshall heads without a master volume until 1981, when the JCM 800 head was introduced. The JCM 800 was then used by Tipton and co-guitarist KK Downing, along with an MXR Distortion, MXR Phase 100, MXR Digital Delay, an MXR 12-band EQ, and a Maestro Echoplex, and a Rangemaster Custom Tremble Boost. During the Jugulator and Demolition era, Tipton was endorsed by Crate Amplifiers using their Blue Voodoo Heads. He would drop this endorsement during the 2004 reunion tour for live performances. In 2008, Tipton began using Engel amps. Of the brand, he comments, Engel is the first amp line that I've ever used that not only has balls, but attitude right out of the box. Beyond his guitar prowess, Glenn Tipton's impact extends to the hearts of fans worldwide. His dedication to his craft and his resilience in the face of adversity have made him a true hero to many. And that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for watching. Glenn Tipton, a guitar legend whose passion and talent continue to inspire generations of music lovers. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share. Now crank up some Judas Priest and rock on.